Shalom to all of you who woke up early this morning. My name is Chris Nikumana. You are listening to the Kanguka Broadcast. Today is Friday and I want to remind you once again the reason why Jesus was crucified. I'm doing this because many Christians don't understand very well why Jesus was crucified. Many people have watched movies like The Passion of Christ but they still don't understand why Jesus was crucified. Jesus was crucified because God's law says that there can't be forgiveness of sin without the shedding of blood. That's why Jesus went on the cross. Shortly before Jesus went on the cross, Peter tried to protect him by telling him to not go on the cross. But Jesus said that he must be crucified. He said that God the Father is more than able to protect him, but he had to go on the cross because it was the only way to save the world. In the Old Testament, before Jesus came into this world, people used to shed the blood of animals in order to receive forgiveness of sin. Blood must always be shed in order to receive forgiveness of sin. You and I are able to receive forgiveness of sin because blood was shed for us. Today, the blood of animals is no longer needed because Jesus himself shed his own blood. The blood of Jesus is pure because Jesus never sinned. That's why we have received forgiveness of sin through the blood of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22 says that according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood and without shedding of blood there is no remission. That's why we should all be thankful for the work that Jesus did on the cross. We are able to receive forgiveness because Jesus shed his blood. I want every listener to know that you can receive forgiveness for all your sins thanks to the blood that was shed. It doesn't matter how many sins you have committed, you can be forgiven thanks to the blood that Jesus shed. Can you imagine that? Maybe someone killed many people, but thanks to the blood that was shed, he is able to kneel down and to repent and to receive forgiveness for all his sins. I mentioned killers as an example, but I want you to understand that killers or thieves aren't the only people who need to be forgiven. Given. Any person who hasn't had the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior needs to be forgiven. You may look at your life and think that everything's okay. You're not feeling guilty about anything. But let me tell you that according to the word of God, if you haven't received Jesus Christ, you are a sinner. And if you are a sinner, you need to prepare yourself so you can have the assurance that you will go to heaven when you die. Jesus shed his blood so that anyone who believes in him can be forgiven. But if you don't accept Except Jesus, it means that the blood he shed on your behalf was shed for nothing. Let me tell you that Jesus wants you to give him your sins so he can wipe them away and so you can become a new creation. Once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you become a new creation and you start a brand new life. That's my wish for every listener. We are all seeking many things in this world. You receive some of those things and there are other things that you won't receive. No one can receive everything he wants. But let me tell you that there is one thing you need more than anything else and that's repentance. If you're living in sexual immorality, if you're bound by homosexuality, if you're bound by drugs or anything else, let me tell you that Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. He wants you to open the door to him so he can forgive you of all your sins. I really want you to understand that it's very important to receive forgiveness of sin. There is no more shedding of blood that's needed. Jesus has already already shed his blood, meaning that he has already paid the price. He just wants you to accept what he has done. Do you accept him? Are you willing to accept him? I want you to understand that Jesus gave his life for you. It's by the grace of God that you still breathing today. It's by his grace that you can hear me today. There are many people who died without knowing Jesus. There are many people who died in their sins. The Bible says that those who died in their sins will go to Gehenna or hell. I don't wish on anyone to go to hell. My desire for you is that you receive salvation. I don't want you to say that you didn't know about it because one day you will hear again all these words that I have been telling you. You just need to accept what Jesus has done on the cross. You need to kneel down before him and say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. I invite you to come into my life. I want you to take my hand and lead me. He will set you free from all the things that are binding you. If you need a then from a man of God, you can give us a WhatsApp call at plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.
And now in the second part of the podcast, and we're going to continue our study of the book of Samuel, which started on Monday. We've been looking at the story of Hannah. She was one of the two wives of a man called Elkanah, and she was barren. She was suffering, and she had a heavy heart. But she prayed, she didn't lose hope, she didn't complain, she persevered in prayer. In those days, people went to pray at the tabernacle. But I want every listener to understand that today, if you want to pray, you don't have to go to the house of God like Hannah. You can be heard wherever you are. God hears you when you are praying in your bedroom. He hears you wherever you are. Today in the new covenant, we are privileged. We don't need to go to a physical location of the Ark of the Covenant. The house of God was useless to them if the Ark of the Covenant wasn't there. The presence of God was only manifest when the Ark of the Covenant was there. But today we don't have to go to the house of God to seek the Ark of the Covenant. In case you didn't know this already, the Ark of the Covenant is a picture of Jesus Christ. I have already taught about this in the past. Jesus Christ was in the house of God or the temple of God, which was equivalent to the church of God today. But today Jesus Christ dwells in in the temple called your body. If you are saved, your body is the temple of God. The presence of God dwells in your body because if you are saved, Jesus lives in you. That's why today you can pray anywhere. But in her time, Hannah had to go to the house of God. In verse 17 to 18, we can see that once Eli encouraged her and he said, The God of Israel grant your petition you have asked of him. Hannah believed that she had been answered. So why did she believe? believe that she had been answered. In those days, if the priest told you that God had answered you, you could be confident that it was true. In those days, the priest was a picture of Jesus Christ today. We know that Jesus prays for the believers. He advocates for us. Our prayers and our thanksgiving need to go through him in order to reach God the Father. So we can see that once Hannah heard the words that Eli spoke, she began to have hope. You can see in verse 18 that she immediately changed. It says that she went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. It means that she had been fasting and she was full of sorrow, but she was now full of joy. So why was she joyful? She had joy because she believed that she had received her answer. Even though she wasn't pregnant yet and she couldn't see the child yet, she believed that God had answered her. That's why the New Testament says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, that if we ask anything according to God's will, we can be confident that he hears us. So, if you've prayed and you've asked for something that's in line with the will of God, you can be sure that God heard you. And verse 15 says that if we know that God hears us, then it means that we already have whatever we have asked of him. I hope that you understand this. You don't have to see it with your own eyes in order to receive it. You believe that you have received it because you know that it's the will of God and you also know that Jesus Christ our high priest is interceding for us. Let's go back to the story of Hannah. So Hannah changed after she prayed. We saw in verse 18 that her sorrow turned into joy even though she wasn't pregnant yet. That's because she had hope after hearing the words of the priest. She knew that the priest was heard by God. He had the privilege of representing all the people of God including Hannah. So when she heard him ask God to grant her request, she believed that she was going to conceive and everything changed because she now had the hope. So she left and we can see in verse 19 that she was finally able to conceive. It says that God remembered her. Please continue to read this story. In verse 27, we see that after she gave birth to Samuel, she brought him to the house of God to present him to Eli. You remember that when Anna was praying for a child, she had promised that if she was able to give birth to a son, she would give him to God. So God answered her and she brought the child to Eli. She reminded him that she was the woman who was praying for a child and she told him that God had answered her prayer and she showed him her son. In verse 27, she said, For this child I prayed and the Lord has granted me my petition which I ask of him. And in verse 28, she said that she wanted to fulfill her promise to God. She wanted to give her son to God so he could serve him all the days of his life. I hope that you understand how important it is. When you make a promise to God in prayer, you should always fulfill your promise. Some people make promises to God, but when God answers their prayers, they don't fulfill their promises. 
that's not a good thing. If you made a promise to God, you need to fulfill your promise. So Hannah kept her promise to God. She gave her son to Eli and she told him that she wanted her son to remain in the house of God and to serve him as she had promised. Please read chapter 2 in preparation for Monday. May I am bless you. I wish you all a great weekend. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus 256-781-377-337.